Good morning, Victory Crescent Avenue family. Welcome to our 9 a.m. online worship service. And as we begin, we'd love to pray for you. If you, your friends, or your family member need healing, please place that in the comment section so that we can pray for you. Father, we thank you that we can gather together online and we know that even if we are in the comforts of our home, we believe that you are in the midst of us. That's why today as we pray for those who needs healing, who need healing, Father, we know that your hands are upon them, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Together with me is our, one of our Victory Group leaders, Jello Gadia, to pray with us. All right, good morning, everyone. Uh, let me share this word for you. It's going to be coming from Jeremiah chapter uh, 17, verse 14. Uh, it says here, Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved. For you are my praise. Lord, Heavenly Father, we want to take this time to ask for your healing, God. Uh, despite of all the things that's been going through for everyone right now, we know that there are people right there uh, even though they're just silent, they're ba battling uh, their sickness, they're battling their struggles, they're battling uh, their anxieties, depression, like pandemic, those who have been hit by COVID, battling themselves, especially those na nag sa ICU. We know that it is hard, but we know that there's one thing that we can rely on, and that is your healing from you, God. Lord, we lift up everyone that who ask for healing, those who ask for the prayers, those who ask for strength, those who ask for hope. And that is you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. And as our viewers put their, comment, their prayer requests in our comment section, we also pray even for those who are not experiencing physical sickness, even those who are experiencing emotional, especially spiritual he healing. If you need that, we pray that God will touch your heart. God will touch and take away any discomfort or any anxiety that you're feeling right now. We know that God will be your peace, will be your comfort at this moment. Whatever you are feeling, we know that God is embracing you at this moment. In Jesus' name, Lord, amen we, and amen. Lord, you also want to pray for us. Uh, uh, Miss Eva, Lord, uh, give healing. We claim healing, God, for Miss Eva. We also want to pray for the sister of Miss PJC, um, Sister uh, Jeanette uh, Falamet Talastasin. Uh, Lord, we pray for her kidney stone. We claim na yung kidney stone niya, Lord, uh, magiheal siya, Lord. That uh, it is you, God, na makakatulong sa pamilya nila. So that take away that pain, God. Uh, take away those struggles. Take away those kind of sickness. Uh, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. And as you continue to put your prayer requests in the comment section, later we will continue to pray for that. We believe that as we continue our worship service, God deserves all praises and worship. And as we begin to sing for Him and to Him, we know that kahit nasa bahay-bahay po tayo, we can all stand up, lift up our hands. Can we please do that? And as we also... Uh, we want to share this live stream by sharing this in our timeline, in the group chat, so that everybody can join us. So why don't we pray? Father, we glorify your name. Father, we just in awe of who you are and what you're doing in our lives. That's why you deserve all praise. As we sing songs today, as we sing songs of worship, we believe, Lord, that you will be working in us and through us. Lord, touch the hearts of those who are in their homes, Lord. Touch the hearts of even those who are yet to join us today, Lord. We believe that you deserve all the glory, honor, and praise as we worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, let us worship God. Resounding, you are calling out my name. It's your heart that I have beaten, and your love I will proclaim to the nations, 
generations there will be your hands and feet for your kingdom for your glory I lay down my everything shout it out Jesus we are here now fill us with your love fill us with your love Jesus you in your name send us in your name would you ask God would you feel us Jesus fill us with compassion open up our eyes to see broken and the weary how you long to set them free yeah. Jesus we are here now fill us with your love fill us with your love it's Jesus you are with us yeah. send us in your name send us in to Jesus hearts we want to be part of your overflow we want to be part of your overflow we want to be part of your overflow your overflow we want to be part of your overflow yes God that's true want to be part of your overflow. I want to see you glorified. We want to see you, want to see you glorified. We want to see you, want to see you glorified. We want to see you, want to see you glorified. You glorified. Jesus, we are here. Fill us with your love. Jesus, you are with us. Come on. Send us in your name. Send us in your name. Jesus, we are here now. Fill us with your love. Fill us with your love. families, in our workplace, even in our lives. We want to see you glorified. We want to see you, God. We want to see, want to see you glorified. We want to see, want to see you glorified. We want to see, want to see you glorified. You glorified.
that your promise is always true. It's ever constant. Thank you, God, that you never change. Thank you, Lord, that we can hold on to, the, to your promises.
It's impossible.
Father God. We know that we can overcome because you have created us to be overcomers, Lord. You have created us to be victors, Lord, of any challenges that we may be facing. And Lord, we proclaim all of these promises. We know we can depend on you because you are our ever-present help in time of need. And we proclaim you, Lord, to be our almighty King, Father to God, our King of kings and the Lord of lords, Lord, the, the name above every name. And Lord, today, Father, that is our faith declaration that you are King above everything. You are sovereign and in control about everything else, Father God, that we are facing today, no matter how challenging it may be, Lord, we know we can find rest and we can find solace in your presence, Lord. And we acknowledge your presence in our midst today, wherever we may be. And Lord, thank you that you are here with us and we give you back all the honor, glory, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray and everybody say, Amen and amen. Woo! Thank you, Lord. All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our 9 a.m. online worship service. My name is Jay. I'm one of the pastors here in Victory Kazan Avenue. Welcome. Welcome. And so glad that you can join us here today. All right. You know what? Last night we had over 70 single ladies and gentlemen who had an amazing evening as they learned more about the truth and their God-given season through our Valentine's event called Valentine's What? We'd like to thank everyone who joined us and we hope that this event helps you gain some clarity in the questions you might have. A special shout out to our good friends, Pastor Alduin and Joy Likud for gracing the event. And we're so excited to see you in our next singles event. As a socially responsible church, we aim to provide hope and education to bright but underprivileged Filipino students across the nation, even in remote and far-flung areas through real life. Let's listen to the story of our first alumna in Marawi and how she aims to extend the hope she received from real life to her family and community. Let's watch this video. At Real Life, we build different partnerships that help us provide access to education to underprivileged students throughout the Philippines. One of our partners is the Bridge Student Center, an interreligious nonprofit organization that aims to serve communities and promote peace by bridging the gap among different cultures, ethnic groups, tribes, and religions. Our first alumna in Marawi is Raisa Haji Omar from the Bridge Student Center in their area. Hindi po ako lumaki sa biological parents ko kasi sa grandparents ako lumaki. May sakit pa yung papa ko tapos hindi makapasok sa work. Hindi sila makapag-work ng matagal. Nakilala ko po yung Bridge Student Center. Super na close po ako sa kanila. Tapos sabi ko, nahihirapan na talaga. Baka hindi na talaga ako mag-enroll. Tapos sabi niya sa kanila, Isa, huwag ano, huwag kang mawala ng pag-asa. Makakahanap tayo ng pag-provide. And then yun, bigla na lang ano, nag-announce yung RL na lumabas na yung result ng ano, mga pumasa. And then, super happy ako. Sabi ko, grabe yung, ano, yung blessing. And na-realize ko na talaga na Kailangan ko din talaga mag-aral para din sa sarili ko at para din makatulong sa ibang tao. So, sa barangay namin, ang daming bata na hindi nakakapag-aral, para sa akin talaga, na-encourage talaga ako na gusto ko talaga magturo ng mga bata na hindi kaya mag-aral. Gusto ko pumunta sa mga lugar na walang mga paaralan. Kasi gusto ko mag-share ng knowledge, gusto ko matuto yung mga bata bilang papalit sa generation. Kailangan natin talaga magsipag mag-aral para maigay natin yung mga susunod na mga generation. Sa lahat po ng bumubuo ng Real Life Foundation, uh, maraming maraming salamat po sa lahat-lahat na binigay nyo, tulong nyo, ma-financial man, or mga prayers nyo. Grabe yung appreciate po namin ng mga scholars. Super laki ng may ampag nyo sa buhay namin. So, thank you, RL. We count it a privilege that we get to bring hope and education 
to the underprivileged youth in Marawi. Thank you for your support and generosity that help us impart values to our scholars. This enable them to participate in building their community and the nation. Every student deserves access, every student deserves access to education and a fighting chance to set a good future. Your support shows our scholars that they don't have to be limited by where they come from. Thank you for inspiring hope with real life. Together, let's continue to change a life and change the nation. Let us now worship the Lord this time with our giving. Let me encourage you with this verse coming from Luke chapter 8, verses 1 to 3. And it says here, Soon after reward, he went on through cities and villages, proclaiming and bringing the good news of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him, and also some women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out, and Joanna, the wife of Judah, Herod's household manager, and Susanna, and many others who provided for them out of their means. Now, the disciples of Jesus provided support out of their means for the proclamation of the good news. Giving our tithes and offerings is a mark of obedience and generosity and allows the church to proclaim the good news to others. The more we give to God, the more he will bless us and the more opportunities for the gospel to be proclaimed and the church to be a blessing to others. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your blessings. Thank you for blessing us, Father, today, and thank you that we can give. Help us to be in the posture of generosity, because we know, Lord, that as you bless us, we can also be a blessing to others, and this is also an opportunity for us to share the good news, share the gospel, and even your enduring love to others as well. Thank you, Lord, for this privilege. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Our center is open every Saturday and Sunday from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. to receive your tithes and offerings. However, to make it easy and safe for everyone, we encourage you to give online by direct deposit. The details are being flashed on your screen. You can also give through GCash, and you may scan the QR code that's on your screen as well, or by visiting victory.org.ph slash give. Options to give to missions, every nation campus, and real life are easily available online. God bless you as you give today. Good morning, Victory Quezon Avenue. My name is Noel Nanez, and I'm one of the pastors here in Victory Quezon Avenue. We'd like to welcome everyone, and thank you for joining us in our 9 a.m. online worship service. If you're here for the first time, welcome, and we're glad that you're all here. And we also have our uh, Victory Group leaders to introduce themselves um, online, and um, they would be glad to uh, help you, assist you in your faith journey with the Lord. At the same time, if you want to be part of a victory group, these are the very men and women that you can connect yourselves with because they are highly trained to help you, to pray for you, and to um, equip you in the ways of the Lord. So victory group leaders, please go ahead and introduce themselves, uh, yourselves online, and welcome Thank you so much for joining us today. As a church, we, are, we exist only for two reasons, and that is to honor God and to make disciples. That is the reason why we have this series entitled Abide, because we want to continue abiding in the Lord and abiding in God's Word. But at the same time, we also would want to inform everyone that we have already um, started resuming our on-site worship services, and we are happy to uh, invite you to come back and join us in our services. Our 11 a.m., our 3 p.m., and our 5 p.m. are now on-site. But at the same time, we also want to invite everyone to come and join us every Saturday, 11 a.m., because this is also online and on-site. Also, we'd like to invite everyone to come and join us in our midweek service 
every Wednesday, 7 p.m., online and on-site. If you want to know more about on how you can join us on-site, go ahead and visit our Victory Quezon Avenue Facebook page, and we will be glad to help you and assist you as you go and register your name to, uh, for all of us to attend online. So we'll see you in our on, on-site worship services. Are we here? All right. Thank you. Um, today, we are ending our series entitled um, um, Abide. And that's the reason why this is very, very exciting for me to do it. We're doing it um, first time. Estamos terminando nuestra serie titulada Abide. Estoy muy feliz de presentarles a todos nuestro predicador de hoy. He's actually live um, uh, through our internet um, connection. And thank you, Lord, for the technology that we have right now. And today, I am so happy. Estoy muy feliz para introducir y presentarles nuestro predicador, our, uh, our beloved pastor. He's actually uh, formerly the Victory um, Ortiga senior pastor. And uh, he used to be heading our, our campus um, ministry. And he's our national director back then. But on a personal note, he's a very good friend a brother in the Lord. In fact, when we were still singles, we used to be um, housemates and doormates. So, ayoko na pong patagalin pa ito. I would like to introduce to everyone nuestro predicador por este hoy, por este domingo. Please welcome Pastor Rico Ricafort! Woo! Hola, ¿qué tal, mi amigo? <laughs> Y también. Sí, también. También, Paso Rico, estoy muy feliz para estar aquí. And thank you so much for joining us online. And we are excited, Paso Rico, to um, hear from you and impart God's word for all of us. So would you please welcome Victory Quezon Avenue live from every nation, Panama, Pastor Rico, Rico Ford. Woo! Wow, gracias a todos. Hello, everyone. Uh, buenos dias, buenas noches from Panama. It is actually, uh, what time is it now, honey? It's 8 p.m. here in, 8.30 p.m. here in Panama. And I just want to say it's such an honor to be with all of you. Thank you, Pastor Noel. Uh, namimiss na po namin yung Pilipinas. Namimiss na po namin kayo. And we're just so excited. And... You know, it's, I can't believe it's been six months since we've been sent out here to Panama. Uh, later on, I'm going to tell you more stories. But I just want to tell, tell you all that you are so blessed to have a senior pastor like Pastor Noel Nanez. I've known him for many, many years. Single po pa kami. Naalala ko po nung nasa Peru kami. Uh, we were supposed to stay for uh, a year. I stayed for three months, and then I went to India. But Pastor Noel stayed for one year. Kaya mas magaling pa siya mag-Espanyol kaya sa akin. Okay? Uh, I, I just want to honor your pastor. And uh, andyan din po sila, Pastor J. Esteban, Pastor Roel. Matagal po sila nakatrabaho sa Pilipinas noon. Wow, Tagalog yun. At tagal na ako di nagtatagalog. Buti na lang, may team tayo dito. But anyway, uh, thank you everyone. And as we end our series, Abide, okay, before I get too excited, I just want to share from John. You can take your Bibles and turn to John chapter 17. And I'm going to read from verse 6 to 9. Okay, I'm reading from the ESV version. It says here, I have manifested your name to the people whom you gave me out of the world. Yours they were, and you gave them to me. And they have kept your word. Now they know that everything that you have given me is from you. For I have given them the words that you gave me. And they have received them and have come to know in truth that I came from you. And that I have believed and they have believed that you sent me. I am praying for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. Let's bow our heads and pray. Father, we thank you for your presence. 
this morning, this evening. We thank you that no matter where we are right now from all over the world, thank you. You said that if two or three are gathered in your name, you are there in our midst. And we thank you, Father, for this opportunity, Lord, to hear your word, to speak your word today. We pray for everyone listening, Lord God, for everyone, Lord, who's present at this very moment, that your Holy Spirit will touch them. That we may remember, Lord, that we can continue to abide in you. Because when we abide in you, Lord, you will deliver us from all evil. Lord, we thank you for your word today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. Well, before I begin preaching, uh, let me introduce first my family. Uh, I'm married to Katrina. And we have three wonderful daughters, Alba in the middle, and then si Maha and Katya. Tapos dito lang po kami nakuha ng papi, si Churo. Okay? Kasi na-promise ko sa mga anak ko, but when they come here to Panama, you know, uh, that I'm going to get them a dog. So we've been here for six months, and I'm glad that we're not alone because over the period of six months, our team has also arrived, not only from the Philippines, but from all over the world. Okay? Um, we have like most of the teams from the Philippines, but we're so excited that this is an international team because we have four ladies from the United States, one lady from Peru, and yung mga pangalan nila, si Bianca, si Renee, si Tiffany, si Linda, si Delia, tapos yung mga Filipinos mo, some of you, Maybe even be familiar with their names. Andiyan po si Topher, kapatid po yan, <laughs> ni Ken Merigrito. Andiyan po si Mark, si Carlo, si Majo, Laika, and si Michelle Abelio, and of course, Pat and Casey, and our family. We're just so grateful. Now, let me begin by saying this. This is not just an every nation church plant. This is our church plant, meaning that uh, it's a victory church plant. It's an every nation church plant. You guys are sent, sent us over here to plant this church. And I just want to say on behalf of the team, thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your support. Wala po kami, hindi po kami namin magagawa to kung hindi dahil po sa support nyo. And I just want to say that Victory, Keson Ave has been supporting us uh, dearly, you know, uh, we're thankful for your prayers. Thank you, Pastor Noel, uh, for your partnership. Alam po namin that we're not doing this alone, but this is our ch church plan. Okay, we are not doing this alone, pero kasama po namin kayo. And tamang tama, as we end our series about abide, what I read earlier, talking about prayers, how powerful prayers are. We know that you're praying for us from the Philippines and from different parts of the world, and that's why we're able to do this church plant here in Panama. We're just so thankful for the team that the Lord has given us. But think about this. Here in chapter 17 of John, we see here Jesus himself praying for us. As we end this series, Abide, the question is, how can we overcome evil? How can we overcome evil in this world? And it's the Word of God that will deliver us. It's the Word of God that will keep us from evil. And that's what I want to share with you today. How will this Word deliver us from evil? Okay? Well, from the very beginning, we need to understand here in this whole chapter, in chapter 17, that Jesus Himself is praying for us. I want to share with you three ways by which we can overcome evil through the word of God. And the first one is this. We can look at verse 9. Okay? Dito pa lang po. We can already celebrate this. What does it say in verse 9? Verse 9 says this. It says, I am praying for them. You know what? Jesus is praying for each and every one of us. You know, as we read this, it gives us the confidence. That's why we have the confidence here to plant this church is because we know we have a lot of intercessors back home, okay, praying for us. And not just in the Philippines, but different parts of the world because we're part of an international team. And that gives us the strength. That gives us the courage. Imagine this. 
And whatever you're going through today, Jesus made a promise that he's praying for all his disciples. Jesus himself is interceding for you. Okay? And what does it say also here? I'm going to jump from to another verse, another part of the prayer. What does it say in verse 15? Okay? In verse 15, let me read that. Sabi po dito, I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. So how can we overcome evil in this world? We have the power of intercession, which leads me to the first point. My first point is this. How can we overcome evil? Through the word of God. When we realize the power of his intercession to protect us. Okay, yun po yung una-una. Jesus himself is interceding for us to protect us, to deliver us from evil. Yun po yung confidence that we have in this word. And that that very word, yung title ng series po natin, Abide. Abide means to dwell, to live. If we are to live in this word, if we are to dwell and make it our home, our dwelling place. Kaya po sinasabi, abide, it's also another word, abode, by humble abode. We live in this word. And when we live in this word, we realize that Jesus himself is interceding for us. Kaya po, kung ano po yung pinagdadaanan nyo ngayon. No matter what you're going through, I know, you know, slowly we're coming out of this pandemic. I just heard sa news, alert level 1 na lang po dyan sa Pilipinas. Okay, and that's good news. Think about this. Jesus is interceding for you. I don't know what you're going through. I know we've had a tough two years. It's not just for people in the Philippines, but from all over the world that... We're experiencing, or we've experienced this tough pandemic. But here's the assurance that we have. Jesus is praying for us. Jesus is interceding for us to protect us. To protect us from what? From what is, what is the evil in this world? Well, first of all, we have to remember, ano ba yung kalaban? What are the enemies of our soul? Well, of course, we you know it's the devil. Second, it's the flesh or our sinful nature, something that's inside of us, but through the blood of Jesus, we've been cleansed and we can overcome sin. Okay? And third is the worldly system. The system of the world. You know, uh, we live in the most polarized generation, so to speak. Okay? People have different opinions about stuff, and it seems like wala well, nang objective truth. And truth is now subjective. And we live in a fallen world, an evil world. But thank God that he gave us his word, that we can abide in his word, and then we can overcome. Let me tell you, uh, our stay here in Panama uh, hasn't been without any, um, let's say that there are some things that we had to struggle with. Uh, we still don't have our visas, like our, permit, our resident visas, our religious visas, and that's what we're praying for. And we believe that we're going to get it in a matter of months, so please continue to pray for us. You know, there are challenges here, uh, the adjustment, but I'm just so thankful that the reason why we're able to overcome these challenges, siyempre, ang gender yung pagiging homesick, ang sarap talaga sa Pilipinas. Lalong lalo na nagpasko po kami dito. It was a, a Christmas like no other because we were away from family. We were away from church family as well. And we, we felt what it was like. And all the more, I remember as we prayed in the past for missionaries all over the world, how important it is to pray. And I, I just want to, I just can't. I, I, I keep repeating this, but I we just want to say thank you for your prayers because it means a lot. That's why we can re remain strong. In the same way, you can remain strong because Jesus is praying for you. I still remember when I was uh, in uh, Victory Ortigas when Pastor Steve was still the senior pastor. And Pastor Ferdy also was there. Pastor Noel also at the time was there, of course before he became senior pastor of Quezon Avenue. I remember after the service, uh, Pastor Freddy would say, if you need prayer, the pastors will be here up front and we will pray for you. 
And I was just a new pastor at that time. And we would see that there was like, Pastor Steve would be there, um, Bishop Ferdy, and then myself. And it's just amazing because you would compare the line. Yung line po ni Pastor um, Steve, hang hanggang doon ata, umabot ata sa movie house eh, sa haba. Gusto mong dami magpapray sa kanya. Kay Pastor Bishop Ferdy rin, ang dami. Sa akin siguro mga dalawa, tatlo, apat. Okay, yung mga nung gumamadali siguro, siguro niisip nila, ah, ito dito kay Bishop or kay Pastor C, direct line to kay Lord. Yung intercession na to, sigurado, you know, direct. <laughs> Mas mabilis yung internet connection. Ito, bata pa to. But you know what? I was saying, Lord, ano rin naman ako ah. Uh, andito ka rin naman sa buhay ko, ba't ayaw magpa-pray sa akin? You know, <laughs> But you know what? I was just assured. I was just laughing years or months later, <laughs> realizing that, you know, some people didn't want me to pray for them. But it was just a funny moment. But imagine this. Hindi lang po si Pastor Steve or si Bishop Ferdy ang magpipray para sa inyo. But Jesus himself is praying for you. We can have that assurance that the very Son of God, our Lord and Savior, is praying for us. And that's why we can be delivered from evil. But we need to continue to hold on to His Word. That's why my question for, for you is, ano po po, I, what are you going through? Ano po yung pinagdadaanan nyo ngayon? This morning, I want to encourage you to have this assurance. Jesus is praying for you. He knows the cries of your heart. He knows what you're going through. He knows the grief, the pain, the loneliness the sense of loss, the depression. If you're going through some tough times financially, the Lord knows it. In fact, the Bible says, even before we approach Him in prayer, He already knows what we need. And that's why I want to encourage you all. Yung po yung una-una. Tandaan po natin that we have Jesus, the power of His intercession to protect us. Secondly, in John 17, 17, this is what it says. Okay, I have my Bible here too. It says, uh, Mabalik muna ako sa verse 16. Sabi po, They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Verse 17, Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is true. Now, think about this. It's the word of God that sanctifies us. The more we abide, the more we dwell, the more we live, Kaya po sabi ng, the word says, Matthew 4, 4, man shall not live on bread alone, but from every word that comes out of the mouth of God. That's why in the morning when we read this Bible, it's our spiritual food. It's what feeds us. It's what sanctifies us. It's what cleanses us. And when we hear that word, it's purifying us. The Bible says it sanctifies. And the word of God is the truth. Like what I said, we live in the most polarized generation nowadays. People don't know what's true anymore. People would deny, you know, what is true and say, no, truth depends on what I believe in. Because if that's subjective, if truth is subjective and no longer objective, then how can you define good from evil? Because if one person says, no, this is, that may be evil for you, but good for me. But the Bible says his word is true. And the Bible says, when we know the truth, the truth will set us free. The truth of the word of God will deliver us from sin. Bakit po? Because we already know from the word of God, his commandments. We already know what's right from wrong. We already know what is evil. And the power of God not only sets us free from the consequence of sin, but it also sets us free from the power of sin. That we were able to discern what is good, what is pleasing, what is the perfect will of God. We can discern what is evil. Kaya po, pwede na po natin iiwasan. Okay? It's like you're going through ways. Buti na lang, may ways din po dito sa Panama. You know? You don't see anything. You know, all you're depending on is this phone telling you where to go, what to avoid, what traffic, you know? To go through para ma-avoid nyo po yung traffic, para you can go to your destination. How much more is this word? It helps us avoid evil. 
avoid sin. We don't see the whole picture, but when we trust in this word, it's going to lead us to our destination. It's going to lead us to where God is calling us to go. And that's why this word, when we read it, the Bible says, How can we change? The Bible says we are transformed by the renewing of our minds. Okay? How are we transformed? When we read this word, the word sets us free. Our mind is renewed. And when our mind is renewed, we start living differently. And that's our hope. Alam nyo po, dito po sa University of Panama, our goal is to reach out to first year hanggang fourth year ng mga students. And currently, we're doing our, okay, yan po yung picture natin. We're doing our English online class. And we're just so grateful because of the two years we've done of this English online class. Nasa Pilipinas po kami. We started doing kasi na-delay po yung flight namin, na-delay yung church plant because of the pandemic. But we are reaping the benefits today because some of these students we've already met. Some of them are already going through one-to-one. And this word is currently delivering them. This word is currently renewing their minds. And that's why we're so grateful to see young students saved here. And it's going to happen that we're going to, our prayer, it's going to be like Jubel in 1984 when students were getting saved left and right. And we're believing that that same word is so powerful. When we sow this word, it's going to deliver people from sin. It's going to deliver people from depression. It's going to deliver students from the pain that they're experiencing right now. We have to remember that the power of this word to sanctify us is present at this very moment. And that's why we want to encourage you. Kapag po nagbabasa po tayo ng Bible every day, hindi lang po na, it's not just something that goes through, you know, this, this wonderful pages with this book, but it actually enters our hearts and in our minds and therefore transforms us. And we're so excited. Yeah, as we end this series on Abide, we have to remember Let's continue to abide in His Word because His Word has power to sanctify us. Okay? Malapit na po ako mag-landing. Okay? Uh, as I continue to read in verse 19. No, verse 18. Sabi rin po dito. In verse 18, it says, As you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. You know, Jesus was also praying about sending his church. Jesus' prayer here was that the Lord would deliver us from evil. Okay? That's his prayer. But it's not just to deliver us from evil to be taken out of this world. But he's actually sending us to the world. It's just so amazing the way Jesus prayed for his disciples. That prayer prayed more than 2,000 years ago is still the same prayer for us today. The reason why God delivers us from evil, the reason why he has sanctified us as a church, it's because he is sending us out to go and make disciples. That is the power of his call to send us. That's why the church is not just always looking inward and saying, Lord, deliver us from evil. Lord, deliver me. Well, you know, pero kaya po tayo din deliver the Lord because He wants to send us out. He wants us to go and tell and spread the good news to our friends, our family, to different nations in the world. Kaya po tayo tinatawag na every nation because God, it's God's idea to send us to different nations. That's why we are here today. It's because of the power of his call to send us. And we're just so grateful today. And ultimately, the reason why we're going to be delivered from evil, because we have to remember this. The reason why we can be delivered from all evil is this very fact. Jesus is the word of God. Let me go to my main point. You know, I, I know I said a lot of things, but I want to emphasize this. 
we have the power to overcome evils because Jesus, who is the word of God, dwells inside of us. And when we say that word abide, let's continue to abide. Let's continue to live in the presence of God. Let's continue to trust in him no matter what you're going through. And as the Lord delivers us from whatever battles we're facing, then we can encourage others. Maybe the Lord has delivered you in the past from depression. Maybe he's delivered you from financial ruin. Maybe he's delivered you from a bad marriage and turned it into good. Maybe he's delivered you from the struggles of insecurity, of sickness, of disease. And because God has delivered you, he will now use you and send you to the world to speak that message of deliverance. Church, Victory Kesson Avenue, let's continue to trust in the Lord. Because when we trust in the Lord, when we trust in Jesus, who is the word of God, he will deliver us. When we say trust, it means to abide, to live constantly, to trust in him 100%. And masasabi ko po ngayon that no matter what you're going to do, Jesus is praying for you. Jesus loves you. And all we need to do is hold on to him, hold on to this world. And no matter what you're going through today, we will find deliverance through his name. I'm not saying all your problems will be resolved in a moment. But what I'm saying is that we have a deliverer and his name is Jesus. Why don't we bow our heads and pray? Father, we thank you for this moment. Gracias, oh Dios, por este momento. Thank you, Lord, for your grace, your word, your presence. As we end this series on Abide, Lord, we remember Lord, that we can abide, we can live, we can trust in you. Because our faith, our trust is in you, Lord. Just like this whole chapter in chapter 17 of John, Lord, you prayed for your disciples. Lord, we have that assurance that you are praying for us. And I pray for those today who are down, who are discouraged, who are having a tough time, Lord, because of this pandemic. For those who have experienced a sense of loss, maybe they've lost a loved one, maybe... They've lost a job or a business. Maybe they lack hope. Lord, thank you that you will give us hope as we put our trust in you. Lord, sa lahat po na nakikinig ngayon, sa lahat po na nanonood ngayon, we pray that the God of all encouragement, the God of all peace, Lord, would deliver them at this very moment. Deliver them from evil. Deliver them from temptation. Deliver them from whatever is holding them back from the call that you have for us. And that is the call to send us out to be a blessing, not only in the Philippines, but to the nations of the world. Lord, we thank you. We give you praise and glory. In el nombre de Jesus. Amen. We amen. Gracias a Dios. Praise Pastor God. Noel. We will continue to pray and minister to everyone. But first, let us pray for Pastor Rico and our team in every nation, Panama. Vamos a orar a nuestro pastor y también haremos uh, para nuestro equipo uh, que actualmente está plantando iglesia en uh, Panama. Let's pray that they will have the, the presence of God as they go and plant um, church, a church or churches in Panama. Let's pray, church. Let's pray, Victory Quezon Avenue, and stand with them in prayer. Father, today we are so grateful, God, that Pastor Rico is here with us in our online worship service. We are declaring, Lord God, that let you be the one, God, who will guide us. Let you be the one, God, who will sanctify him, his family, and his entire team, Lord. 
Let you be the one, God, who will protect him, his family, God, and the entire team against any kind of evil, Lord. Let you be the one, God, who will intercede for them, God, as they go and plant uh, your church, Lord, in every nation, Panama. We are so thankful, Lord God, that our team, Lord, will not even back back down, Lord, with whatever challenges that they are going through right now. But we believe, Lord God, that you have given them that vision. And it is you, Lord God, who will carry it on. Let the blessing of God be upon Pastor Rico, his family, and his team. Let finances, Lord God, be upon them, Lord. Let there be favor, God, upon favor, Lord, for their visas. Let there be, Lord God, an open door in the campuses. Most especially, Father God, we are believing for a wide open door in in University of Panama, Lord God, that they will get a harvest, Lord, of leaders, not only for today, but in the future, Lord God. Lord, we are thankful for the impartation that Pastor Rico shared to all of us in his preaching. Be with them, Father God, as they continue to abide in you. Bless Kitty, bless Alba, Maha, and Katya, Lord God. And may they always be, Lord God, your presence will always be Go before them, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Rico, for such a powerful word. We miss you, bro. We miss you, guys. Maraming salamat. God bless you all. Thank you. We will continue to pray for everyone right now. You know, as Pastor Rico mentioned, it is the Word of God that will help us go through whatever season in life that we are going, going through. And as we are ending our series entitled Abide, we believe that God is going to give us the grace to continue to abide in Him. As Pastor Rico mentioned, as we abide in the Lord, it is the Lord Jesus Christ who will intercede for all of us whatever you're going through in life. It is the Word of God who will sanctify us and make us be transformed and be Christ-like in all our ways. But at the same time, as we prayed for Pastor Rico and his team, we are, it is the Word of God likewise that will give us the unction to go and preach the Word, make disciples, whether we are doing it here in the Philippines or whether we're doing it in, 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 in Panama City, Panama, or whether we're doing it in every nation, let the Word of God guide us right now. So Lord God, I, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that whatever... Lord, we are going through in life, Lord. It is but temporary, Father. Lord, for our light and momentary troubles, God, are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs what we are experiencing right now, God. So I'm declaring, Father God, that each one of our church members, whether here in the Philippines or there in Panama, Lord God, let the protection of the Lord Jesus Christ be upon us. Let there be, Father God, the Holy Spirit who will empower us, God, wherever we go, Lord. And as we obey you, Father, and as we preach the word and and proclaim your word, God, in our families, with our friends, and even in every nation, Lord God, let you be the one, God, who will be glorified in and through us, Father. We give you all the glory. We give you blessing and honor. We give you all the praise, God. And as we worship you, Father, strengthen your church right now, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's just worship the Lord right now. Thank you, Jesus.
dancing in honor. Blessing and honor now and forever. Salvation belongs to our God. So blessing and honor. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We give you glory and honor, Father God. And as we end our series on Abide, Father, help us abide in you all the days of our lives. Lord God, likewise, Father, would you give us your Holy Spirit, Father God, that the Holy Spirit will continue his work in us. We are so grateful, Father that we have your grace, we have your Holy Spirit, we have you with us, Lord God. So that is what we are going to stand on, God, as we go and proclaim your word to the people around us, God. The whole world is waiting for the gospel to be proclaimed. So that is why, God, you will use your church, Father God, to be instruments, Lord, in proclaiming your gospel around, uh, uh, around the, the world and even in our families, Lord God. Receive the Lord's blessing right now. May the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. May the Lord let His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn His face and His countenance upon you and I'm praying right now that the Lord will give us the grace to continue abiding in Him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Just greet Pastor Rico online and say, Thank you so much, Pastor Rico, for your powerful word. See you again next Sunday. Bye.